I'm feeling compelled to talk Layla today for some reason. Um, I think it's because I, I saw a track sheet from Criteria Studios uh, on the recording, and it made me think about um, the title track. So we'll start there. The first thing is um, uh, that opening lick that you hear, uh, those first seven notes, is, is actually Dwayne's contribution to the track that Eric Clapton had already written. I'll do some backstory maybe some other time on Derek and the Dominoes, but it is pulled directly from Albert King's uh, As the Years Go Passing By. It's the first line of the song. There is nothing I can do. I can't sing, but it's essentially what the, no uh, what the uh, riff is and then sped up. Now I'll go a little bit backstory and talk a little bit about Derek and the Dominoes. This was Eric Clapton's project outside or after he had left Blind Faith, the super group he was in with, um, among others, Steve Winwood and uh, Ginger Baker. Um, he stole Delaney's and Bonnie's band uh, for the project, and eventually uh, they settled in Miami. We're trying to record the record when Dwayne Allman came along. There's a really famous story. I put it in my book, Play All Night. Uh, about the first time that the two of them met and actually it was Dwayne was playing uh, live in Miami, looked down and there's Eric Clapton and he froze and Dickie Betts jumped immediately in and filled the gap, looked down and also saw Eric Clapton. Um, so uh, at that point they got invited back to the studio. There's a whole disc full of jams uh, that feature pretty much the whole Almond Brothers band, but J-Mo, who wasn't so into it, as he said, um, in several accounts. Uh, went through, and then Dwayne ended up, um, you know, a, a, if you count the fact that Derek and the Domino's Layla record is their only record, I guess you could also say that the the, the Live at Fillmore is, is a second one, but he was a full-fledged member of the band, or at least it seemed like it. He was on a majority of the record, everything but the first three tracks, if I recall. Now, as, as great as Layla is considered today, and it, and it really is, it's, a, it's an absolute classic, it's an album that is you know, burned into my soul. You'll hear me say that a lot of times around here just because so much is burned into my soul, but that one in particular is. I don't love every track from front to back. That's for, for another, another time. But as great as an album was, when it was released in September of 1970, it was really a pretty big flop on the marketplace. In fact, it didn't hit at all until 1972 when um, Atlantic, or I guess it was Atco, released an anthology of Eric Clapton's uh, called An Anthology, I believe, uh, which inspired um, uh, Capricorn Records to do the same for Dwayne later on that year. And Layla was on both of those records and it was a massive hit and it's become a massive hit or at least a staple of FM and rock radio and now what we call classic rock radio when you go through. But here's the deal about what makes Layla so significant. For me, as a person who studied this, who pays attention to this, who wrote a book on the Allman Brothers Band, um, the fact wasn't that Dwayne came in and lit an Eric Clapton project, just lit a flame in it and, and made it come out to this glorious record that most people, including I bet Eric himself would say, is his best artistic work. But that after that album came out, Dwayne had a chance to join Derek and the Dominoes at a pretty significant amount of money, way more than he was making in the Allman Brothers Band, and he turned them down. And I think that's really super significant because here's the deal. Dwayne was 23 years old at the time. I guess he was about to turn 24. Maybe he was 24 when he got the offer, but I think he was probably 23. Um, Clapton, he did go out and play a couple gigs with Derek and the Dominoes. They weren't the greatest. They weren't a super practiced band. I'm going to put up some stuff later uh, uh, from that. I just got a really clean version of, of Layla that I haven't listened to in many years. Uh, anyway, live. But another side note there. But um you know, basically when Dwayne came back, there were, he had a discussion and, and I know Butch, I have this quoted in my book, was saying, you know, Dwayne, you have so much more with us than you do. That's Clapton's gig, not ours. I think JMO summed it up best. He said, shit, Eric Clapton should be opening for us. Uh, anyway, so uh, Dwayne did not join Derek and the Dominoes. That band basically petered out. Dwayne spent another, you know, year uh, alive and recorded at Fillmore East and a big good part of, of Eda Peach, the three or four sides of Eda Peach, and really left his mark with his band, the Allman Brothers Band. Um, Layla, incredibly significant moment in Dwayne's career and in rock and roll, in rock history, um, and really, really was a, um, a crowning achievement for, for Eric Clapton and, and a great moment in Dwayne's career, but certainly not his artistic ma masterpiece. I'd still put that for at Fillmore East since he really conceived of that entire uh, band and the way that they played. All right, long live the Almond Brothers Band.